Hey everybody, it's Dr. Jensen and welcome to week three, module three. So this is Global Conflicts part two, where we start moving into what some of the rebellion and revolution looks like as different empires struggle in society. So this kind of takes that foundation we built last week and moves it into guerrilla warfare. Okay, so let's take a look at what you'll be completing. So first, you will compare and contrast Che Guevara's principles of guerrilla warfare and our founding father's Declaration of Independence. You know it was written by Thomas Jefferson. And we're going to challenge the idea of one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. And so these two documents are very, very similar as far as um, them basically writing up an indictment of a country that they feel has been oppressive and that justifies their need to revolt or rebel from that country. So you find a lot of similar language, yet as we study these actors, we draw very stark differences between the two. And, you know, we really separate them as far as their vision, their goals, their calls to violence. It's really interesting to see um, these two documents together. So we're going to spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, we'll also um, not only read Che Guevara, but we will uh, look at, again, wealth and economic inequality and uh, describing how that's changed in the United States, um, especially before and after the Great Recession, which is very recent. And then we're also going to interpret the idea of nation states acting as terrorists on their own people. So in our Think About It tab, um, I want you to watch some clips in the video section that come from a film way back in the 80s that's called Other People's Money. There are two economic speeches, they're kind of classic, in, uh, and they provide these perspectives on really the economy and how it affects community. One speech is given by uh, Gregory Peck, and uh, his character is named Andrew Jorgensen, who's a president of a wire and cable company. And they're getting ready to sell the company and having this big stockholders meeting to determine the steps for that company. And he really has this stump speech about, uh, you know, being uh, good about having lasted so long and, and all the, the good it's done in the community for jobs and job creation and so forth. The second one is uh, Danny DeVito, and he's portraying a character called Lawrence Larry the Liquidator Garfield, who's representing an investments firm, uh, who's attempting to buy the company. And both of these two gentlemen provide speeches as to really what is in the best economic interest of the stockholders and the community, and they draw from a lot of different ideas of how we see ourselves interacting with each other um, as a community and economically. So you'll find those two videos here. Here's the Gregory Peck video, it's four minutes and the Danny DeVito video, which is five. Um, that's really the context for, for those speeches, but they, they're very, very powerful. You'll see them in economics classes from time to time, but uh, they get at how, how competition works, how markets work, um, and really you know, how the economy churns forward and recycles itself from new ideas and old ideas and, and does what we call creative destruction. So creative destruction is a concept that comes from Schumpeter, who's an economist, and says, you know, sometimes some sectors die to make room for sectors that are new. Um, and, and it's a very painful death sometimes that, that uh, occurs, and, and people are often left behind. Um, but then we have to look at what's in the best interest for the economy and the country. And, and just because GDP is going up doesn't necessarily mean that all of our lives are getting better socially. Um, or that we all have um, peace and protection in our community. So this is going to kind of put some of that together uh, for us to see kind of how people start to feel a little ostracized from their government, how they feel ostracized from their neighbors, and start to feel that violence is justified. So you can see we're moving forward into the mindset of how people finally get to that place where they feel like they can attack. So this covers, again, guerrilla warfare but giving us that background into how um, oppression or perceived oppression begins to occur. 
So here in the readings tab, we actually have a very short article that talks about wealth and inequality, which again is a big foundation for uh, how groups um, start to separate and challenge governments for failures or oppressions that they see happening in their lives. Here's the Principles of Guerrilla Warfare article by Che Guevara, which is also a classic article. Realize this article originated in Spanish and it was translated to English. But Che is, is kind of an iconic figure in South America. And to get to read some of his work, I think is, is really fascinating because of the kind of impact that he had in guerrilla warfare uh, throughout many, many countries in South America. And he's still revered as, as an iconic uh, revolutionary today. Um, and then finally, here's the Declaration of Independence from the Library of Congress. So um, you can read it in plain text or straight from the Library of Congress and kind of compare those two articles together. This will give you ideas as to what we're getting at and also give you some ideas as to how to write your assignments, uh, questions that I'm going to ask you on the exam and quiz. So you might want to jot down some of your notes as you compare the two. Uh, finally, down here, we have Can a State Be a Terrorist by Wilkinson. So this is actually a book review on Wilkinson's work, which is much shorter and abbreviated, a little bit easier to read than the actual book or chapter from Wilkinson. So I thought this would help us kind of at least go through some ideas on whether states can oppress their own people and how that works out. Uh, finally, you have a Hoffman text chapter, The Internationalization of Terrorism. So this is where we start to see um, country to country exchanges and uh, terrorists kind of focus on um, across country issues rather than within country issues. Okay, so our videos for the week are, of course, your overview of the module. I give you a lecture on Che Guevara so you can understand his life and his writings and what he went through and why guerrilla warfare occurred. Here are the two speeches I mentioned earlier, and then I have a short. Uh, frontline film called Inside Yemen, which starts to give you a backdrop as to some of what's happening um, in the Middle East um, and, and happening currently. Okay, so as far as activities, you don't have as much to do this week, so you get a little bit of a break. I realize I have a lot of reading for you to do in this class, so this gives you um, a chance to get more of the reading done and take more of those personal notes that you need to do while you read and uh, just dive into a short quiz. But again, I my uh, request is that in the weeks that are a little bit lighter that you make sure you do thorough reading notes and lecture notes because they will save you when it comes time for exams and the final. So make sure that uh, you take the opportunity to thoroughly go through the material so that you can be prepared um, for those upcoming assessments. So that is module three. Enjoy it. Let me know if you have questions, and I think uh, you'll, you'll see some, some really fascinating things and be more and more prepared to understand something as tragic and, and uh, scary as terrorism because we're seeing some of the roots of where it's coming from. See you next time.